Hi guys, so I'm here on the Heart Centered Visionaries YouTube channel and I'm Hannah Marie from Hannah Marie Coaching and I'm here to talk to the lovely Lisa Forbes from the Cyclical Kitchen and Sweet Seedling. So hi Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Hi Hannah, lovely to be here. Great, how are you doing? Because you're over yeah. in Berlin. I am, it's a beautiful autumn morning this morning, so nice and misty this morning, sunshine but freezing yeah. cold. Oh, yeah. I love the autumn, it's my favourite time of year, like the time yeah. of shedding and like time to hibernate and go inwards, love it. Exactly, yeah, it's really beautiful. Amazing, so Lisa, just to introduce Lisa, mm -hmm. Um, she's a holistic health and nutrition coach, and she works with women to balance their hormones naturally through diet and lifestyle. Um, and this is what I absolutely love because she teaches women about the four phases of the menstrual cycle and which foods support you best in each phase, which we're actually going to dive into today, um, which I really like know a little bit about. And I'm I really want to learn more about this. So yeah just to start with I'd love to hear like how did you get into this work like what led you to working with the menstrual cycle and mm. finding out the foods for each phase yeah I guess it's been a bit of a journey um mostly based on my own personal experience and my own personal journey um but I've sort of realized retrospectively that everything I've done previously is led me up to this point which I guess is often our experience isn't it mm. um so yeah um I started my career working in mental health so I've always been really interested in well-being and how we keep ourselves well um and that kind of spectrum of wellness um supported a lot of people um before then uh going on to train as a teacher um and my focus of teaching was around um looking at people's differences supporting people's strengths um supporting them to maximize their abilities i did a lot of work um with neurodiversity and uh, people with autism and um, my reason for training as a teacher was because i wanted to work with people with disabilities um and support them to be um valued participating members of their communities um so yeah the um i was working in a university in london um and i was having my own struggles uh with my cycle um which i'd had always so i've always had a lot of pain um issues with heavy bleeding issues with my mood with pms mm -hmm. and um I had spent a lot of time trying to find solutions. So I'd followed a lot of traditional routes to try to understand what was happening, to try to find ways of dealing with it whilst having a really high pressure job and being able to con like contribute to the workplace, but not take a lot of time off mm -hmm. um, and to deal with the pressures of that job. Um, mm -hmm. And the only solutions I was getting were uh, to take the contraceptive pill um, that all women experience pain and it was something I just needed to learn to deal with um, and these are things that I just I didn't really believe I didn't think that that was okay um, I was offered antidepressants um, in the UK um, as you know the GP acts as a gatekeeper to gynecological services so mm. you can't really even get to see a specialist and then unless they deem you to um, to need to do that so right it's crazy I, isn't it like no, thanks for sharing so openly about that because I, I, yeah. I relate to what you're saying and I think we because we're kind of brought into this quick fix world of like pop a mm. pill and it will kind of solve your pain I think mm. we and we were talking about earlier is that we are quite disconnected from our bodies um, yeah. and I also too suffered really bad period cramps for like 12 years um, and was mm. on the pill because of that but I never thought of a holistic alternative um, mm. solving that problem right so it's kind of in that yeah like in that challenge that you you find your purpose as you're saying mm. so yeah so what does um what does that look like when you like how did you kind of find the solution mm. for you and heal heal your struggles with your cycle so I was going through a, a few different processes at the time um, and 
one of them was looking at getting out of my career um, because it just wasn't working for me anymore. It was too stressful. It was exacerbating my issues. And mm -hmm. so one thing I was doing was exploring um, things that brought me joy, things that I really enjoyed doing, things that could potentially lead to um, something else. And that's where the, the food came in. So um, I was really looking into food a lot. I was, um, I'd retrained as a plant-based chef mm -hmm. um, and I was looking a lot into food and nutrition alongside my journey with the menstrual cycle. So um, I found somebody in the UK who was teaching um, workshops on the four phases of the cycle. Um, so um, uh, you may have come across her before, Maisie Hill. She's amazing. Um, and she yeah. was teaching workshops in Margate. Um, and I went along to one of those. And it was the first time that anybody had ever talked about us having four phases of our cycle. Um, this wasn't something I knew about um, and really talked about it in a much more holistic way and helped me to understand that, um, that we go through a lot of change over the course of a month um, in a lot of different ways. We, um, the way that we feel, our energy levels, our ability to communicate and socialize, our attention to detail, our um, organization skills, mm -hmm. like so many different things are affected by our fluctuating hormones through the month. Um, and I was just like, huh, <laughs> this explains so much. Um, so I really started to look into that and then to think about an intersection between my interest with food and my interest with um, my own journey with um, the menstrual cycle. Um, so eventually I started to create workshops for women because I felt that it's kind of an injustice for us not to know about this. Mm. My understanding from speaking with um, a lot of different women, women with teenage daughters, is that these things still aren't being taught in schools, they're not being taught or shared by doctors. And this is information that we as women need to share with each other so that we have a better understanding of how we fit into the patriarchal world that we live in and why that causes us so many issues. A hundred percent. I love that. Mm. It's it's almost like finding a way you can be empowered throughout the cycle instead of thinking and I think yeah. there's a lot of stories of like shame and guilt coming up with the yeah. cycle and not honoring that time which is really sacred right mm. and this is something I want to touch on because I love how you talk about the four seasons and I'd love you mm. to to elaborate on that a little bit because I know a little bit about it and obviously in my work with the moon it fits in beautifully yeah. but I really clock this about I think it was about two two and a half years ago and and I was like I need to heal this pain it's ridiculous so I found one of the books called Awaken the Wild Power Within mm -hmm. um, I think you've heard we spoke about that before and, and she talked about the four seasons I was like this is incredible mm -hmm. and I realized it connected with the moon and actually mm -hmm. just knowing what to do each time of the month is incredible because you can yeah. use your energy to be more productive right whether it's yeah. being creative at that time or when you're bleeding to actually go in and retreat and kind of mm. have your own space and have a cocoon like it's so important for us as women but as you say we're just not tall shit yeah. um, so I'd love for you for people mm. who don't know because I know a little bit about it so what are yeah. to start what are the four phases of the yeah. cycle yeah, so there are so many synchronicities with the phases of the moon. It lines up completely. And once you start to look into it, you realize that it synchronizes with um, the season, the seasonal world that we live in, the changing seasons of our planet. Um, there are so many cycles that fit with this model um, in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. There is um, a real synchronicity between the, the elements as well. So mm -hmm. how the elements support the menstrual cycle. So um, once you start to see it, you start to mm -hmm. see it everywhere. And it's so just taking it from a seasonal perspective, it's the concept of a winter, spring, summer and autumn. So mm -hmm. as you go through the phases of your menstrual cycle, you feel those energies differently. Um, and you move through that. So it's the same as starting with uh, um, the day one of your cycle in your menstrual phase um, would be similar to the energy of the new moon. So it's a time of darkness, of inner retreat, um, reflection, wisdom, intuition. Um, 
and then um, as we get to the end of our bleed, um, the next day after that, as our bodies um, are replenished with estrogen, so our estrogen levels start to rise again, we move into our spring season, which is our follicular phase, and is all about abundance and growth and setting intentions and um, our uh, uterine lining is growing. So it's all about kind of um, new growth um, and the feelings of springtime. Um, and then we get to our summer season, which is ovulation, which is similar to the full moon. And it's where we're in full spotlight. We're fully illuminated. Um, we're bright, we're colorful. Um, we have really great communication skills. We're very good at being seen at this time. The, um, our mood is very stable. We're really happy to talk with others, but we have very good skills in terms of listening at the same time. So um, all our hormones are at the highest of um, that they are throughout the cycle. Um, and this can be um, a really nice time. And then as we then go into the next phase of our cycle, our luteal phase, it's when we start to um, decrease again, our energy starts to draw in again. It's like the autumn time of the seasons we're starting to harvest um what has um what we've planted and um throughout the rest of the month um we are really wanting to slow down and withdraw a little bit from our um social networks and get ready for that next phase um the winter phase again where we want to hibernate so it's about getting our house in order getting organized um, and um, feeling like we're ready to do that. So, yeah, the, it's you really get a sense of the, the how the energy shifts throughout that cycle. Um, yeah. And yeah, thanks yeah. for explaining that because I think I feel like when once you've and this is just like a, you know the starter of it, but for people watching that don't know about this, just connecting with those four you know cycle four phases can be really life-changing yeah. like you know you're using those words of intuition um and like even creativity at the summer phase yeah. but you know it does it does help to just understand what your mood is doing right and our emotions because yeah. as we say we live such busy lives that we can forget what, what our body's doing and it, it's almost like because I work with the moon as you know and absolutely yeah. love that kind of guiding women through it but I see it these are also it's like an experiment isn't it like because mm. we all feel different things at different times although that we've got this framework and I've realized that I'm like loving the dark moon phase <laughs> like it's like <laughs> my favorite time probably because I was born under a dark moon phase I realized this but I love that like cocooning in and kind of just just clearing the space because actually if you give yourself that space the rest of the month is it flows and you actually have more energy Mm -hmm. so I think it's so important for women to give themselves that introspective mm -hmm. time each phase and, mm -hmm. and setting intentions for that absolutely and I think that once you have insight into these phases and you do honor them in a way that you might not have done before particularly if you're living in the world that we're in which is all about output and productivity and busyness and being rewarded for achievement um, and not really considering the value of rest and recuperation and um, if you really do value that then you feel so much better and it gives you so much more um, wisdom and insight and being able to be centered with yourself for the rest of the month. Mm, 100%. Do you mm. have like little rituals or kind of um, mm. practices around the, the four phases? I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I think that a lot of my uh, centers around food, obviously. Um, but the, um, I think it's about having that awareness and connecting in. So making sure that I'm increasing my self-care um, in the luteal and menstrual phases, but also that I'm not overriding what I need in the follicular and ovulatory phases as well. So making sure that I'm using the extra energy that I have and that I go out. But a lot of mine is to do with kind of looking at what's coming up and nurturing myself with food, with preparing meals, with, with um, different 
cooking techniques and sprouting things and fermenting things and oh, a lot of rituals cool. around those yeah. that sounds amazing and I'd love to learn more about that so that goes lovely yeah. it goes really well into the sort of the next part so obviously you were saying we were talking earlier about you help women like eat and use nutrition mm. around the phases so can you talk a bit more about that how do you yeah. well, let's start with how what kind of foods can you eat at the different phases yeah so I find that food is a really lovely lens into understanding your menstrual cycle. We all have to eat. Um, you can incorporate a lot of um, self-care through food. Um, and when you're looking at using food to support the phases of your cycle, um, what you're doing is you're putting your body first. Um, so you are... Um, using a much more intuitive approach to eating, which goes against this diet culture that we live in, where it's all about what you shouldn't eat and how you should be careful with different foods. Um, this is very much about thinking about what where your body is in terms of the phases of your cycle um, and what kinds of foods are going to support. So what are going to match you energetically, which are going to give you the minerals and the vitamins and the different kind of proteins and fibers and fats that you need and what's going to support you so it's a really nourishing and um intuitive approach to eating mm. um and I love that so because yeah. it's so important to nourish yourself with foods you know we are we are what we, we eat and actually I've done a lot of research into because I used to have skin problems which mm. partly was hormonal but actually like you know eating those foods that help inflammation for example yeah. or or bloating I found really helpful yeah yeah where do you start with all of that <laughs> <laughs> um so there's some really good resources out there so um the the key person that started doing um cycle syncing was Elisa Vitti and she has a really good uh, book called The Woman Code um which uh talks about the different foods and you can see that she's come up with those She's taken a, a slight Ayurvedic approach, a slight traditional Chinese medicine approach. Um, and um, you can kind of understand how those foods nourish you in each of the phases of your cycle. Um, and it's all about kind of thinking about the energy as you flow through. So when I first started doing this, um, I, what I did was um, I looked at the four phases and which foods, so everything I do is plant-based. So all of the foods I recommend are plant-based. Some people choose not to eat plant-based and there are recommendations outside of that. Um, but my um, perspective is that plant-based, eating a much more plant-based diet is helpful for everybody, mm. um, irrespective of if you then choose to um, eat other things as well. The main thing that I advocate against is eating dairy because our um, it's so inflammatory for our body and it is it affects our hormones so much um, right do you know I, I I love dairy and I've had problems with that and I'm always I almost notice when my skin flares out up throughout the cycle and if I cut out dairy even just for I think it's about four four or five days before my period my skin is better because I've had yeah. no dairy so I really try and minimize dairy but it is yeah. hard for a lot of people I think it's finding yeah. alternatives um, it is and it's that whole concept of like just taking it gently with yourself starting where you are um, I really promote the idea of um, swap don't stop so if you're trying to stop dairy what can you swap it in for instead like what would be something that you enjoy that um, you could swap in and try for a little while instead so that you don't feel like you're punishing yourself yeah. it shouldn't be like a, a punishment in any way you should always feel like you are kind of nourishing yourself and you're getting things that you want so taking it slowly yeah um so maybe I can share a picture yeah. with you um yeah, and I'll go through each of the phases as well yeah. and um explain what's happening but it might have to be helpful to see a picture first so it's a photograph that I took um of my living room table um where basically what I did was I laid out some fruits and vegetables and grains and beans um from day one of the cycle all the way through to day 28 so you can see the changing energy of those foods I love um, that. that's great Let's see. and it kind of gives you an it helps you to anchor it a little bit so let me let me share that with you once yeah. we find it it's really good to have the visuals you know so we can yeah 
Because it is about the energy of the food as well, I imagine. And it, it's a lot to do with the energy of the food as well. Um, and I, yeah, for me, I sometimes need to be able to have something to call to mind. So when I'm standing in the supermarket, I can't remember the big list of things. <laughs> yeah. So to have a bit of a visual um, can be helpful. So let me share this with you. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So this is just so this is my table. So we've got day one of the cycle over here on the left, um, going through all the way to roughly day 28 for an average cycle. Wow. Um, so what you've got here is in this first quarter here, these are the foods that are great for you in your menstrual phase of your cycle. Mm -hmm. um, moving through to the foods that are great for you in your follicular phase or the springtime of your cycle. Um, and you can see they look very much like springtime type foods. You've got yeah. like carrots and sprouts. <laughs> Um, then you move into ovulation and what you've got here is, uh, so this is your summertime of your cycle and these look like a tropical summer holiday, like they're very summertime foods. And then you move into your luteal phase, which is all about autumn and harvest. So the foods in this section of the table are very much like autumnal foods, like root vegetables and pears and cauliflower. Um, so you get a sense of the seasons, I think, just from looking at that yeah. table. That's an amazing picture, and I think it's lovely to see the shades of colours, as you say. Because yeah. I was, I was immediately drawn looking at that pomegranate in the first yeah. quarter, thinking yeah. it's almost like the underworld, you know, like pomegranate. Uh -huh. And I always talk a lot about <laughs> Pluto and the myth of Persephone. Uh -huh. Like you're going in, you're going into the underworld. Like you know, uh -huh. when, when you bleed, you're going into a space of yeah. surrender, kind of yeah. going into yourself. So when uh -huh. I saw the pomegranate, I, that reminded me of that. Yeah. I well, they say as well that foods often look like what they support. So the pomegranate, so as you move from the menstrual into the follicular, what you're doing is you're supporting the um, growth of the egg um, and the follicles. And mm -hmm. so what you look, I mean, this looks like an ovary, like with, all the, with all the it's eggs. Good. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> and the same with the papaya in the middle there. Wow, um, okay. So how, so that, that is incredible. I love that you shared that picture. So I guess, can we, how can people just start working with this wisdom? Is it, you know, is it best to have a, they can use this photo as a, as a guide to, to see what they can can eat really yeah um and there are there are guides as well so i do i teach a class on this where i share shopping lists with people um we talk about this in my facebook group from time to time so which are the foods um that are most helpful for you and maybe what i could do is i could just go through each of the phases and talk about the foods generally yeah and why they support you just to give a bit of an idea um and then as you get more familiar with it um i think you kind of get a sense of which foods are supporting you mm. um but one thing to note is um so i have these shopping lists and i have a lot of recipes um and sometimes people say to me what if I eat foods uh, from a different phase when, I, when I'm not in that phase? And I think it's important to remember that none of these things are going to be harmful to you. Hmm. Um, all they're doing is they're supporting your body. So there'll be some foods that are better for you than others. But it doesn't matter if you eat a beetroot in your ovulation phase when you're supposed to eat it in your yeah. menstrual phase. It's like, it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and maybe your body needs that, right? Maybe yeah. your body is needing a bit of that um, other phase of the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. feeling more summery yeah. in your winter you know it, yeah. it can vary can't it yeah different as individuals so yeah and I think we're so inclined to like find these frameworks and use them as another way to to punish ourselves or to look at ways that we're doing something wrong that we could we just inherently think like that but this is not another tool for doing that at all um yeah I, I feel like I've started I was meal planning for a while and I, mm. and I love it because you know you get your list go to the supermarket for the meals and I'm I basically am vegetarian I eat a little bit of fish yeah. and again but 
I love that plan but now I'm like I feel like I need to just intuitively shop when you're in the supermarket your body knows like I've literally been craving grapefruits for like a year now (laughs) most days and I'm always drawn to these grapefruits so I trust that I need the probably vitamin from grapefruits but I'm obsessed with them (laughs) my body's trying to tell me something so you really just absolutely (laughs) absolutely and I think like one thing that's good about this so if people aren't so familiar with connecting with their bodies in that way so like they're not used to trusting the intuition of their bodies or they haven't been able to feel so easily the messages that their body is giving them this is a really nice way of kind of creating that connection and as you do it month by month by month if you follow kind of a bit of a framework like you say once you've followed a plan for a while you then just your body intuitively knows it and you learn to trust your body Mm -hmm. and you don't need to follow it quite so closely anymore so I don't go to the shop with my list anymore I just know Um, and it's really interesting when I have women come on my courses they will reflect and find that they've been eating like this anyway without really knowing why and that they're drawn to these things because their body is wise enough to to lead them this way that's beautiful so Mm. do you that's great you have the shopping list for because I'm really practical I love that do you have any other kind of practices or things that people can do watching this like practices to help them connect with that with their body and their intuition I think it's always helpful to start with like a body scan so really regularly doing a body scan noticing any kind of aches and pains any kind of like uh, different energies in your body um, just observing that without putting any kind of judgmental language on it mm-hmm. um, and then connecting that with what you know of your cycle and seeing if any of these things might be telling you something from a cyclical perspective, from your menstrual cycle, Mm. um, looking at patterns over time. Like if you get into a practice of doing that regularly, you might realize that right before your period every month, you get a small headache. Um, And then you realize actually that's because of the the drop in hormones. Mm. And then it doesn't feel like a big problem for you. You know that you can eat something that's going to help with that or that you know that next month what you need to do is you need to eat foods that are helping to balance your hormones um I love that perspective because because I work a lot with um, women I work one-to-one with and and working with the moon cycles and the daily lunar cycles is really tuning into their patterns right so noticing when they feel more tired in the month when they have more energy and actually something for me I notice is every like in my autumn phase before before the winter I always my inner critic is so loud (laughs) I notice it (laughs) gets louder and louder so then just Mm -hmm. accepting that is much easier because when I'm Mm. moving into menstruation then it's easier to let go of those voices of self-doubt and just surrender and think well what is what is the bigger picture here like what is it I need to almost grieve and let go of Mm -hmm. there's a sense Mm -hmm. of like almost grieving old dreams or visions that's what Mm. I always feel of that winter phase so Mm -hmm. it's really leaning into surrender isn't it if you have food used to help you do that it's incredible I think it empowers you a little bit doesn't it so first of all that knowledge of what's happening in your own body is incredibly empowering Mm. um to not have to worry that there's something terribly wrong that this is a natural part of being a woman um, but then to feel that there that you have within your reach things that you can do that support those body processes. And for me, like just learning that um, if I have cramps, for example, that just making a tea out of fresh um, parsley and ginger mm. is incredibly helpful. And it really kind of it fixes the issue. And I spend a lot of time making different teas at different phases of the cycle that help my body and it's it's incredibly empowering to feel that you can do that um that's beautiful it's like little rituals for yourself yeah it's like yeah. It just really again it just connects you in with your center and you're yeah. you feel more empowered rather than like I have a physical pain I can't do anything mm-hmm. about it but it's breathing mm-hmm. into okay what what do I need right now mm-hmm. so with with the women you coach and you work with mm-hmm. what are like you know if anyone's watching this as well and they have these challenges with period cramps I know that's one of mine like what is Mm. what is the first thing you'd say for them to how can they start to sort of listen Mm. to that pain and almost Mm. support that pain in some way yeah it's I mean there's kind of a range of issues that 
women tend to have, but a lot of them come down to the same key issues. So even before you start with cyclical eating, there are a number of things that you can do um, that are going to help your health generally. So anytime you have pain, it's usually because of inflammation um, and the, it's a sign of inflammation in your body. And the menstrual cycle itself is an inflammatory process. Our body is naturally inflamed because of that process. Um, so it's about reducing things that are inflammatory for our bodies. So the key culprits for that are going to be things like um, dairy, sugar, processed and refined grains, um, alcohol, caffeine, smoking, um, all of those things are going to be inflammatory um, for us. And sugar um, is a particular issue when it comes to cramps and period pains. Mm -hmm. um, what sugar is doing is it's increasing our level of prostaglandins, um, which is what's causing us that pain. Um, so anybody who experiences a lot of pain, I would say the first thing you want to do is, is reduce or eliminate sugar. Oh, that's so interesting. I must say, it, what the list you've mentioned, I'm pretty eat pretty healthy. I'd say 85 percent of the time, but my guilty pleasure is coffee. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I find really hard to cut out, even yeah. like in my winter phase, I'm like, what? Yeah. I think it's okay and like with all of these things any advice that I give is going to be pretty general um, yeah. because everybody is different so what works for you won't work for somebody else mm -hmm. so again it's about um, really understanding so coffee might be okay for you your body might metabolize coffee okay um, but sometimes what you find is that you don't realize that it's coffee that's causing you problems so I know that I have tons of issues with coffee but I love it it's like yeah. one of my yeah it's so hard isn't it? when you <laughs> in Australia for a year you have yeah. I have become a coffee snob <laughs> and I love my coffee so it's one thing I've cut so much out my diet it's one thing I don't want to give up <laughs> yeah and there's things that you can do like I didn't realize it was causing me problems until I stopped it completely and then I came back to it and now I realize it really interferes with my blood sugars um, it gives me headaches I really quickly get quite addicted to it um, so it's about kind of thinking about it in a more intuitive way so I will sometimes have a coffee um, and, but I will make sure that I've um, that I have eaten properly beforehand that I'm not drinking on an empty stomach um, but I've also left a gap so I don't drink coffee with my food because then it stops my body from being able to absorb the nutrients yeah. um, but that I found other things that I like as well so I like a golden turmeric latte mm. um, I like a matcha latte so that still has um, caffeine in it but it doesn't affect your blood sugars in the same way so that um, and you release the caffeine in a more measured way yeah. so just minimizing the coffee that I have like maybe once a week or so I have a coffee now yeah. um but you've, just you've got it you've got to let yourself enjoy things right it's that balance isn't it yeah. being kind to yourself but also yeah. knowing some things maybe aren't good for you in, in, yeah. in too many quantities um yeah yeah so uh, this wisdom's beautiful and I love, like I literally could keep talking about this with you all day. So a little bit, I'd love to hear a bit more about like how how do you work with women? Because I know you have like a beautiful membership that you've created. Um, tell us a bit more about your process. Okay, so um, it's been growing over the last uh couple of years so what I used to do was teach cooking classes um, around um, the basis of the cycle um, but I don't do that anymore so I do online master classes um, and my main ones are around um, cyclical eating so I go into a lot of detail around the four phases and how to eat and how to create your own recipes um, and I have another one which is um, I developed because of my own journey but because also I was hearing um, a lot from women about the same issues around um, lack of communication, lack of information um, around perimenopause and menopause. Um, so uh, I'm teaching a masterclass on that because women need to understand and know that we enter into perimenopause much, much earlier than we think that we do. So 
in our late 30s or early 40s, um, we can start to have changes in our hormones that are leading us towards menopause, sometimes up to 12 years later, but those changes impact us on a day-to-day -day basis. So mm -hmm. having some knowledge around that and being able to prepare for that and being able to kind of navigate that in terms of how we feel, it really affects our anxiety levels, our our um, mood, our, the symptoms with our cycle. So mm -hmm. I teach on that as well. Um, I have a Facebook group, um, The Cyclical Kitchen. Um, I'm doing, um, I do a holistic health and nutrition consultation. So that is for women who want to kind of get a starting point really so have an assessment of where they're at now in terms of their nutrition in terms of their lifestyle what are the key things that are likely to be affecting their hormones and their general well-being um, to do an assessment of that um, and then provide guidance like individualized guidance on what are the key things that they can go and do now to start to make a difference to how they're feeling beautiful um, I do one-to-one -one and group coaching on these topics and uh about three months ago, I launched a new membership program. Um, so it's um, my Wild Things membership. So this is a community okay. of women. Um, and we're talking much more broadly um, about kind of a lot of the, the things that women want to talk about. So I think once you start on this process of becoming more aware of yourself as a woman, becoming more aware of how you fit into the world that we live in, the patriarchal systems that we live in, the, the knowledge and information that isn't always shared with us, um, and kind of the scope of how we can get more connected with ourselves in the world that we live in. We, we have a lot of questions and we have a lot of curiosity and it just opens up this amazing world for discussion around things like lunar cycles and foraging and oh, it's um, so important it connects us back with that wild essence right like yeah. I feel like you know we women used to be probably connected in tribes more and we don't uh -huh. have that space so to have an open space where we can be vulnerable and share yeah. the challenges is so potent isn't it like absolutely so needed and it's beautiful you hold those spaces for women yeah so we're just growing that and we've been talking about all kinds of things some things nutrition based some things to do with holistic health mm -hmm. exactly as you say finding your tribe and rewilding yourself mm -hmm. um and so I'm just coming up with the next uh, plan for the next three months so I'll be opening the doors for that community again in November mm -hmm. so for anybody who has an interest in in joining us I um yeah definitely definitely leave the links to your work if you want to mm. connect with lisa because honestly what she's doing is really incredible and you bringing the nutrition into the the, the phases mm. i haven't really heard of that much so mm. it's definitely something to connect with and i definitely want to learn more from you so yeah. i'm gonna stay yeah. tuned for that um so okay just like with everything we've covered it's incredible yeah. i think this is so helpful for women watching and i've learned a lot myself you know, if, if somebody, if some women are feeling like really overwhelmed and they're like, just like, mm -hmm. oh my God, there's so much out there, so much yeah. information, like, where do I start? Like, what, what would you say to them, first of all? I think um, one of the key things is, and this is um, what I work with, with women a lot, is um, recognizing that you have an authority within yourself, that you don't need to always, um, take on board all of the information that's out there. If you were to put it all together and you were able to kind of filter it through, you would find that everything contradicts itself. There's one person saying you should do this, another saying you should do that. And it can get really overwhelming. So it's about kind of having the confidence and to start to trust your own body, to trust your own judgment, um, certainly to ask questions and to explore but to find a way that suits you. So if you're coming up with a way of eating and I've said that you should eat this many uh, macronutrients and, and that doesn't work for you, then that's, that's okay. So testing it out through, through your own journey and coming up with what works for you. Um, but engaging with all of the amazing women out there that are doing work on this and finding your connections, finding your tribe and working together and supporting each other. I love that. I love you say about authority because it is, we have that personal power. Like we yeah. have all the answers within us, but we always go searching out there and that's super helpful, mm. but you're the one that knows truly what you need. So listen to mm. it. It's um, true. 
So any, okay, so any, like, before we wrap up, I literally is fascinating. Do you have any last words of wisdom that you'd like to share with women out there? I guess, like, the key thing about all of this is um, we all have different histories and stories with food, um, but to find a way of coming back to that place of really just enjoying your food. So finding joy with what you eat, um, finding joy with what you do, um, celebrating the colours, the diversity, the different types of foods that we have access to, enjoying food with others. So um, it's about nutrition, but it's also about enjoyment. And our bodies are much more receptive to absorbing nutrients when we're coming from a place of being open and receiving and feeling in a state of, of happiness and joy. So trying to culture that. So making sure that you use your best plates and your best cups and everything looks really beautiful on your plate and that, um, yeah, you're cultivating that sense of happiness and joy within you as part of this process as well. Oh, beautiful. I love that. It's so true. Like my one of my mentors said, I've been experimenting with Venusian living and she was saying, yeah. You know, light a candle, you know, like yeah. light a candle as you eat, even if you're eating on your own and put some flowers on the table, yeah. you know, because like haven't had the dinner party thing. Uh -huh. and maybe it's going to come back, but just that little bit of creating that abundance, almost making it into Absolutely. a ritual that you really celebrate and enjoy your food. That's really yeah, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So apart from lastly, so you've got your membership <laughs> launching, did you say in November? So yeah, we'll open the doors for that again in November. So I'll be doing some promotion around that over the next couple of weeks. Beautiful. And have you got anything else coming up that you would like to share? Um, I will be um, putting some more workshops on. So I have my um, cyclical eating workshop this weekend. Um, I run that every two months now. Um, and I run my perimenopause and menopause workshop every other month. Um, and I will be starting to um, release some workshops around cyclical planning soon. So how to engage with the energy of your cycle and to be as productive um, and rest to get as much from yourself as possible. So connecting with that energy. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So many amazing things coming up. So yeah, really honestly connect with Lisa. I'm going to leave all the links in the description so they can go find, but go, go Google the Sweet Seedling, her beautiful yeah. website and services. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Like it's really been a joy to learn from you and hear, hear more about this work that you do. It's incredible. You're welcome. Thank you. It's really lovely to talk with you, Hannah. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>